Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on how to run an hour of code. I know a couple of people are still joining in, so we will let them do that. Uh, I'm Sarah, and I'm joined by Anayo. And we'll introduce ourselves in a bit. But as we're waiting to get started, could you please introduce yourselves in the chat? We'd love to know what's your name, where are you from, how many years have you been teaching, and have you run an hour of code with CodeHS before? So again, for some of you who just joined, thank you for joining. We're excited to have you here and talk about running an hour of code. And we would love to hear from you in the chat as we're getting started. And the information on that is on this slide. All right, thank you. And if you're still introducing yourself, no worries, you can continue doing that. But I think we can get started. My name is Sarah. I am a project manager at CodeHS. So I work on various projects throughout the company. And if you've worked with me before, I also part-time customer success manager. So work with schools across the country and super excited for you all to be here. Um, I was a middle school math teacher prior to coming to Code HS, so I have a little bit of that background, and I've run a bunch of Hour of Code sessions, so excited to share my knowledge with you today, and I'll pass it to Anayo to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Anayo. I'm in Dallas, Texas, Customer Success Manager at Code HS. I also taught middle school math before getting into the world of ed tech, but love working with our teachers and administrators to really support their students in computer science using Code HS. Awesome. And excited to hear that some of you have taught some of you someone's in Sydney. Awesome. Thank you for joining all the way from there with a crazy time zone. Um, we'll try to keep you as engaged as possible during this webinar. So here's an overview of what we'll be talking about today. Basically, what is Hour of Code, how you can best choose a tutorial for your students how to run the hour of code, and then some other ways to engage your students during CS Ed Week. And then we'll wrap it up with a Q&A at the end to make sure we address any questions that you have. In terms of questions, you have been using the chat bubble at the bottom to introduce yourself, so thank you for that. Um, in order to differentiate between the questions that you have and the introductions, we'd love if you could use this little Q&A button at the bottom. And that way we can just track what everyone's asking and, and get to answering all of those questions that you have. So now I will pass it to Anayo to introduce Hour of Code. Perfect. So next week is Computer Science Education Week and Hour of Code is an initiative set forth by that organization through code.org. I'll put the link here if you're interested in reading more about CS Ed Week, but it's cool because the goal is to get students nationwide and all around the world even interested in computer science, especially if they don't have a chance to take a course during the day. And so when you go to that website, you'll see links to lots of tutorials and many lessons that are available. And CodeHS has a really nice suite of options that's available for your students in all different areas of interest. And so again, the overall goal is to get more students interested in computer science. We know the world is shifting towards being more and more technologically advanced, so we want to prepare them for those career opportunities in the future. Uh, fun fact, CS Ed Week, it is held the first week of December, close to the ninth each year to honor Grace Hopper. So we'll talk a bit more about who she was in a second. And again, that is the date, September 6th, December, excuse me, 6th through 12th next week. So something really cool you can do to kick off CS Ed Week and your Hour of Code celebration is maybe talking about some prominent figures in computer science with your students. We've highlighted a few here for you today and we'll 
do a quick history lesson on some of them. But again, Grace Hopper was an early pioneer in the realm of computer science. She was a female in the US Navy and was responsible for helping to develop the Harvard Mark I, one of the early computers used for business operations. Second, we have Clarence Ellis. So he is actually the first African-American to receive a PhD in computer science and has made lots of great gains in the area. Next, we have Evelyn Granville. She was one of the first African-Americans to receive a PhD in mathematics. And a lot of her contributions were impactful in helping NASA get the first ships to space. And then the last one we have is Miguel de Acaza. He's a Mexican-American computer scientist, works for Microsoft currently, and has really been involved in making great contributions to software, computers, and a lot of the technology we see today. Awesome. So now we'll talk a little bit about how you can pick the hour of code that you start off with. You can do multiple if you'd like, and we will go through that. So we have a ton of options. As you know, we have a lot of Code HS content throughout the site, and we do have a lot of options for tutorials, including programming with Carol the dog in JavaScript, React Native mobile apps, creating virtual worlds, web design, fun ones like blockchain technology, the list really goes on. And these are outlined at our website, codehs.com slash HOC. And they're also separated by level. So some of them are beginner, majority of them are beginners. So if they have encoded, or if they have a little bit of experience, those might be best for them, but you'll see on the site, which ones might be best for your students. We also do have a couple that are unplugged materials. So majority of them are on code HS and are using a computer. But if you wanna get kids offline, which a lot of times teachers do, especially if you are in the classroom, these are a few options that you can use and they all have lesson plans associated with them. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can run your hour of code and a couple of different setups that we have. So the first level that we have, which probably makes sense for a lot of you that joined this webinar, are computer science teachers who lead hour of code sessions with their computer science classes. So in that case, you might already be teaching a class, whether that's web design, JavaScript, um, Python, or any of the courses that we have. And something that could be fun is introducing your students to a new language, maybe trying a new type of project. So if they've only learned JavaScript, maybe having them try the Tracy the Turtle introduction. And there's really a lot of options there that you can do with those students that won't overlap with what you're teaching them or won't overlap in your course pathways. Then the next level is hosting an hour of code with non-computer science students. This is extremely important because the reason that hour of code was started is really to get those students interested who might not necessarily sign up for computer science classes on their own. So this is an exciting way to get students excited especially if they might join your class eventually. So one way you can do this is organizing a department-wide hour of code, whether that's for math, social studies, science, or other departments in your school. And then the last level, which is really fun, um, is running a school-wide hour of code event. So some things you can do here are consider bringing in industry speakers for an assembly, hosting a school-wide hackathon. We actually do that as a company sometimes, which is really fun or maybe an after-school parent night to get parents involved as well. So those are a few ways that you can run it. The options really are limitless to how you can run it. If you have ideas, we'd love to also hear about those in the chat. If you've uh, used these before or done anything creative or thinking anything creative, we can help set that up for you. And then we also have this chart to help you choose the right tutorial. Um, and that can be located at codehs.com slash HOC choose tutorial with underscores. And then I was gonna put that in the chat. And you can see here that they're separated into grades and also how much coding experience they might've had. So we all know those sixth graders who have had years of coding experience somehow. And so maybe we can give them some advanced work, but this is a general overview of how you can find the proper or the most um, similar hour of code tutorial that you're looking for. 
And at the bottom, we also have those unplugged tutorials. So once you've chosen your hour of code, it's okay if you haven't already, we still have a couple days, but now we'll talk about how you can run that in your classroom. So here's how to get started. Hour of code tutorials can be run whether a student does or does not have a CodeHS account, meaning they can go on to CodeHS without an account and work through any hour of codes that they'd like. The one thing that I would keep in mind is we always recommend students having a CodeHS account because that's the only way that we can save their work on CodeHS. So definitely would recommend that. However, if it's not possible or you're doing a school-wide event and you just wanna make sure students are working, that's definitely an option. Another thing to keep in mind is, so the with the CodeHS account that you can do is create a section and enroll your students. So this would be a great way if you really wanna track their progress, see how they're doing throughout the hour of code activity. Um, if you've used CodeHS before, you know that you can look in and you know see how they're doing, but if they're not enrolled in a section, you won't necessarily be able to track that. Um, and then the other option is if you already have a CodeHS course that you're using and teaching with, you can easily just assign the Hour of Code module into your course. So from codehs.com slash Hour of Code, you can click assign and then bring it directly into your course. So students are going the same place that they're used to and working through that same course. So a couple options you have there. And then here, without a CodeHS account, you can direct the students directly to codehs.com slash hour of code and have them click start course, or you can link them directly to a specific hour of code link. Um, one thing to keep in mind here, if they do have an account and they click start course, they will be able to see their progress, even if they leave CodeHS you as the teacher just won't be able to see their progress. And if you as a teacher do not have a CodeHS account, you are welcome to create that for free, codehs.com slash sign up slash teacher. And then you can begin creating those courses for your students or creating sections for them. All right, a couple things that you'll need. Of course, you'll need a computer, but it's really great if all students have access to their own computers so that they can each complete the hour of code activity on their own. If you're not in a one-to-one -one setup, I would recommend doing an unplugged activity, um, or you can have students do pair programming, which can be great to work together in pairs or in groups to complete any of the hour of codes that we have on CodeHS. And so consider having an extra set of computers and headphones just in case. If students are at different parts of the hour of code lesson, it will be great for each of them to have headphones so that they can uh, do it on their own. It's not causing a commotion in the class and things like that. There are a couple different setups depending on which hour of code tutorial you choose for this specific one, which is React Native mobile apps. I believe that's a an intermediate level, um, or maybe it's not beginner, but you can check that one out. It's really great, but one thing you need to keep in mind is that students need to have access to their smartphones, which we might not always want them to have access to. So that's something to keep in mind with this one. They can have an iOS or Android phone, and they'll need to download the Expo app. So we recommend downloading it, downloading it in advance so that it doesn't take up too much time in your class period and you can be ready to go for that. Earlier, Anayo had talked a lot about the history of computer science and some of the awesome figures that have really made up computer science education. And so one thing that we have that we wanna share with you is a sample introduction slide deck. So rather than just throwing students, especially if they haven't had any um, experience with computer science or don't know what computer science education week is, it's great to start them off with this slide deck to talk about what is this hour of code? Why are we doing this? What is CS Ed week? Um, where is code used and things like this. You can also take this, make a copy and edit it and add in your own things that you're interested in talking more about. But we do have this sample slide deck that you can use to get your kids excited and engaged for the day.
We also have a teacher guide. So this is like a lesson plan for the hour of code. There are many ways you can run it. Um, I, when I've done this before, I've had a lot of fun playing the video for the entire class and then pausing in the middle, checking for understanding, um, getting them engaged and all popcorning around the room to answer specific questions, things like that. There are a lot of ways you can run it. And a lot of these are outlined on this teacher guide. So you can use that as a lesson plan to guide your questioning. Yes, we will be sending a recording of this session. Good question. If you've used Code HS before, you know that we do start every lesson with a video. So we do have the Hour of Code videos that pretty much work the same way. It's a lesson and students can learn about the Code HS IDE through this, see real life examples and learn the necessary coding that they need. We also have some student facing resources that are the same as you would see in a section that you're teaching. So on the right hand side of the code editor where students will complete their work, they'll see a docs tab, which is really just a reference sheet for them so they can always reference anything that they've learned in the videos. And then under more, they also have access to slides for that video, and then they can also create a shareable URL so that they can share anything that they've created with you or with the class. And now for, just for some tips and tricks while you are doing your hour of code, and I'd love to hear, I know I mentioned it before, but if anyone has any tips and tricks and wants to put those in the chat, that would be great to support with other teachers as well. Uh, one is allowing students to work at their own pace. This is why we recommend the headphones in case you do have students who are really ahead of the game and working really quickly and really excited about it. We find that it's nice not to limit them and to allow them to go and, and really create some awesome things. Giving at least 45 minutes to complete the tutorial. If you have more time, that's always great. A lot of these tutorials will end with a really fun project where the options are really limitless to what students can do. And you can give them additional challenges. They can go into the docs tab and find um, more things that they can add to it. Asking problem solving questions. So a lot of these can be found in that teacher guide that I had mentioned, but you can also come up with questions that might support your students uh, rather than giving them the answer if they ask questions the same way you would in any class, you can ask those problem solving questions. Encouraging them to collaborate with their peers. I had mentioned maybe you could do some pair programming um, where one student is typing and the other student is coaching or, or telling them what to complete in the hour of code, or you can just have them work together as a group. It's really fun to see them figure out what they can do on Code HS that way. Pausing for full class clarification or discussion is great. We have a bunch of discussion questions that you can bring in and students get really into it. And then sharing out. Sharing out is the best part of it because students are really excited about the programs that they've created. Um, something that I've seen before and that I've done before is kind of like a um, gallery walk where students will keep their programs on their screen and then they'll they'll move across the class to see what other students have created. And then they can use that to help give each other ideas for what else they can create. And um, having some students explain what they did too is really helpful to give ideas to other students as well. So now I will, I know there's a lot of talking by me, but I'm gonna hand it off to the awesome Anayo who will close it out with other ways to engage your students during CS Ed Week. Awesome, so at Code HS, we love supporting our teachers and being as involved as possible in classes with you and your students. So definitely take advantage because each day next week, we're gonna offer a live hour of code workshop. So you can actually view this schedule and register your class. You can zoom in and kind of project to your screen. And if you have questions, you can send them to us through the chat from your kids so they can still communicate with our guest speakers. But it's really neat because they'll be able to work through the tutorials live. And at the beginning of the week, we will have some special guests, CodeHS software engineers. So they'll get to hear a little bit about what happens at CodeHS and how our site is made. And then at the end of the week, we will actually have some industry guest speakers. So on Thursday for the art workshop, 
will have Flor Dries. She is an artist turned computer scientist who's worked at Microsoft. So she'll have some really interesting stories to share about blending her two passions to make really cool projects come to life. And then on Friday, we will have Mrs. Maris. She is actually a mechanical engineer, another person who has worked with NASA to develop some resources to get our ships to space safely. So. And we've got lots of resources available for you. Again, we'll send out this slide deck again, but we wanna make sure you choose a tutorial that's appropriate for your students, their grade level, the things they're interested in. We have a really cool site called Coding in the Wild. So I'll link that so you all can look at it, but this is kind of a blog that we keep up with here at CodeHS. And we interview different professionals in different industries through podcasts, text-based interviews, and they have really cool stories to share about how they use coding in their jobs in a variety of areas. So we've got some that talk about coding in the world of sports, coding in the world of fashion. And basically we want the kids to see that coding and computer science can be applied to anything that they're interested in. So definitely take a look at that resource. Yes. And it doesn't have to stop here. Maybe this is your first time ever seeing Code HS, so hopefully you'll be able to use our hour of code lessons and really get your students interested. Um, we have full year-long courses that explore a variety of topics. Students can learn web design, Java, Python, JavaScript, and make some really cool programs. So definitely kick off with CS Ed Week next week if this is your first time using Code HS, but definitely see about continuing on throughout the school year to support your students. And we do have a full knowledge base at help.codehs.com. So if you ever need support on a very specific issue, if you can think of a good search term, we have really good help articles that'll make it easy to get that assistance. We're closing up on time. Interested to hear if anybody has any additional questions. Again, if you're one of our returning teachers and you have some really successful stories on running an hour of code, feel free to share that info in the chat. But yeah, thank you all for attending today. And if there are things that are on your mind, feel free to let us know. Okay, I see two people have their hands raised. We don't have the feature for you all to turn on your cameras right now. So if you could type your question in the chat or Q&A, we can get that answered for you. Okay, Duane says, what time are the sessions that we are running virtually? They are at different times, but I will relink the event calendar for you. So these are listed in the central time zone, but you can register for any of the Zoom sessions. These can also be found, yeah, at that resources page and you can always register for them. If you can't make it, we might have them recorded. We will. Great. Just double checking. We will also have those recorded. So you can always find those on this same page. And you could, if you wanted to do turtle graphics and have somebody lead it virtually, you can play that recording for your students as well, or maybe just get some ideas on how this teacher led that hour of code. Great, Maureen just asked, will they be recorded? Yes, they will be recorded. You will also have access to all these links, yes. And as some people maybe are still typing some questions, feel free to continue doing that. We still have a couple minutes, but I will share my screen here just to show you how some of this might work. So codehs.com slash hour of code is where we will find all of the tutorials that we have listed here. And I mentioned that you could either have students click start course. Again, just a reminder, probably good for them to be logged into an account. They can create a free account and start their course on their own if they would like to keep their, uh, if they would like to keep their progress. If you would like to see their progress, make sure to enroll them in one of your sections. Um, if you have an existing course that you have students in and an existing section, you can click assign. 
and then assign it to any of the courses that you're teaching. And you'll see that it says this course is being used for whichever sections it's being used for so that you make sure it gets put into that proper section. I see someone else might have raised a hand. If you could put that question in the chat or in the Q&A, one of the links wasn't working. Shirley, could you let us know which link that was? Scroll on this page. And as you can see here, there's also lesson plans for each of them that you can open up and teach that way. Okay, it was music, you said. So let's try it here. Hopefully it's something that has been resolved already. If not, we'll make sure to do that as well. Yep, looks like it's working now. I'll check on the lesson plan too, just to make sure. Great. So this is something that you can access, a lesson plan for any of them, accompanying handouts we have, objectives, links to the activity that will take you right there or take your students right there. And you can do that. Um, one thing about this though, this is the link to the activity that will take your students right there, but just make sure that uh, you have them enrolled in your section if you want to. Click on the link on the lesson plan. This one. Okay. Okay, yeah, so it looks like it's been fixed now. So hopefully you'll be able to access that. Can you try it on your end and just confirm for us? Awesome, thank you. Definitely helpful to have you all double checking us and, and making sure that everything's set for each other. We appreciate it. Is there anything else that you would want to see demoed from our side? Um, again, this is the Hour of Code homepage, codehs.com slash hour of code or codehs.com slash HOC, where you can start a course. You can start any of them if you wanna practice. You can assign to your students in existing courses or sections and then view lesson plans. Here's where you can check the levels um, and look at what these are all about. They're super fun. Um, the Coding in the Wild blog that Anayo had brought up is a really great way to get students engaged in coding at all. Uh, I, I visited a classroom at one point and a girl said to me, why should I be interested in this? I'm interested in graphic design and this has nothing to do with that. And so I pulled up one of these articles and showed her and she said, oh my gosh, I have to pay attention now. So apparently she was a great student for the rest of the year. So this could be an awesome way to get your students engaged in that. And it looks like we are closing out in about a minute. So if there are any last minute questions, feel free to write those in the chat or in the Q&A now. Otherwise, we are always available at support at codehs.com or at the little blue bubble at the bottom right of your screen. It looks like we got another link to the HOC music. Let's just see if that works. Great, looks like it's working now. So thank you everyone again for joining and we'll be closing out and we will send out this recording. Have a great rest of your day and we hope you have a great computer science education week.